Minimum wages for fast food workers are set to hit $20 an hour in California today after a deal was struck last fall between the unions and the fast food industry. Kate Rogers joins us right now with more on what this means for workers, businesses, and consumers in that state. Good morning, Kate. Hi, Becky. Good morning. The minimum will be among the highest in the nation and the sector's highest as of today, with ripple effects sure to be felt for all parties involved in varying ways. Right now, Glassdoor data show that just over 20 percent of California fast food workers are making $20 an hour, so many more will wind up getting a pay raise. There are half a million workers in the sector in California. I sat down exclusively with Mary Kay Henry, SEIU president, who said this model of organizing by sector instead of by business by business will be replicated in the future, mentioning New York, Washington, and Illinois as potential future targets. So it's a combination of workers' willingness to strike mm -hmm. and to lobby legislators and to defend the governor in the recall campaign as the fast food workers did here in California. When those conditions are created in other states, we'll be able to make this same progress. The hike may also lift wages for low-wage workers who are outside of the restaurant sector. Business owners like Jennifer B. Perez, who runs Growing Roots, a plant design and maintenance company in Long Beach, are closely monitoring the increase in order to remain competitive. It's a ripple effect because I'm not part of that industry, but of course I'm actually looking at all of that as well because like I said, I've always haven't worried about it too much because I was like, oh, I'm always over minimum wage. But since that keeps increasing and increasing and like that's a 25 percent increase from 16 to 20. Her lowest paid worker is at $19 an hour and she has to be wary of further price increases for her customers, she says to Becky. Back over to you. I mean, Kate, that's really the issue here are I've been calling them unintended consequences. Perhaps in the case of the unions, these are intended consequences. Uh, but it, it, it really creates all kinds of unknown potential changes and how that ripples through not just related industries, but completely unrelated industries. How do you find workers in any of those other industries? Earlier this morning, we were talking about whether that be home health care aides, therapists, mm -hmm. uh, whether that be aides in schools, and a lot of those people who are caring for the elderly. I mean, those are some of our most vulnerable populations, and these wages are not going to far outstrip those wages. What, what happens in the meantime? It's, it's going to be pretty chaotic. It really will be, Becky. And I went to Seattle, and we did a big story on this several years ago, because if you remember, they raised to $15 an hour, which was very high at the time. And different studies over the course of several years after had different findings, right? Some low-wage workers had their hours cut, but then it did wind up giving them a nice economic boost. And depending on how you surveyed people, you got different findings there. So it's going to be a very interesting study to see here in California. And as you heard the SEIU president, they are looking to do this in other states because this was called kind of a backdoor way of unionizing, uh, doing it by sector, right? Not by individual business. So it's going to be a fascinating right. thing to follow. What's different about this too, though, is this is an overnight rate hike of 25 percent versus doing mm -hmm. it stair step as that's traditionally yep. done when you start to raise minimum wages to allow things to settle in instead of having this overnight like kind of crazy change.